In 1928, British bacteriologist Fred Griffith published a study on two strains of pneumococcus, S strain and R strain. The S colonies have a smooth surface, and the R colonies had a rough surface. The S colonies look smooth because each bacterium has a capsule-like coat made of sugars. The coat protects the S bacteria from the host's immune system, and so the S strain is infectious. The coatless R strain is not. Griffith found that mice injected with S strain develop pneumonia and die within days. Mice injected with R strain do not get pneumonia. Griffith noticed that different strains of pneumococcus could be cultured from one patient. He began to wonder if one strain could change into another. To test this idea, he did a series of experiments using the R and S strains. First, Griffith heated the S strain culture to kill the bacteria. As predicted, when injected into mice, the heat-killed bacteria did not produce an infection. Griffith co-injected the heat-killed S strain with live R strain into mice. And much to his surprise, the mice developed pneumonia and died. Even more astonishing, Griffith was able to isolate live S strain from the blood of infected mice. These cultures could infect other mice. S strain, cultured from infected mice, remained active, showing that the change was stable and inherited. Griffith concluded that some principle was transferred from the heat killed S strain to the R strain. The principle transformed the R strain into the infective S strain with a smooth coat. Oswald Avery became very interested in the identity of this transforming principle. With his colleagues, Colin MacLeod and McLean McCarty, they used test tube assay instead of mice. First, they used detergent to lyse the heat-killed S strain cells and used these lysates for transformation assays. The test tube assays worked well and showed that the heat-killed S lysates could change R strain into S strain. The transforming principle was something in the lysates. They tested each of the lysates components for the transforming activity. First, they incubated the heat-killed S lysates with an enzyme S3 that completely chewed up the sugar coat. They tested the transforming ability of the sugar coatless S lysates. The sugar coatless S lysates were still able to transform. This indicated that the R strain was not just assembling a new S strain sugar coat from the pieces. Next, they incubated the coatless extract with protein digesting enzymes, trypsin and chymotrypsin and tested this lysate's ability to transform. The protein-less lysates was still able to transform, so the transforming principle was not protein. While they were testing and purifying the lysates, the precipitated nucleic acids, DNA and RNA with alcohol. They were the first to isolate nucleic acids from pneumococcus. Since the transforming principle was not the sugar code and not protein, the suspected that it may be one of the nucleic acids, the dissolve the precipitate in water, and tested the transforming ability of the solution. First, they destroyed the RNA using the RNase enzyme and tested the solution for its ability to transform. The solution still had the ability to transform. Therefore, RNA could not be the transforming principle. What they had left in lysates was virtually pure DNA. As a final test, they incubated the solution with the DNA digesting enzyme, DNase. Then they used this solution to test for transforming ability. The solution was unable to transform. Avery and his colleagues concluded that DNA is the transforming principle. They published these results in 1944.